Hello, everyone. First off, I just want to say thank you to all the people who have liked and subscribed and watched, um, especially in my lemur series. It means a lot to hear your feedback, and I'm glad that, for the most part, the feedback has been positive. Um, today, I'm not going to do a really long video like I've done on all the other ones. This is just a quick video, something that I've seen in some of the more advanced lemur um, templates, a technique that people use to be able to create scrolling interfaces. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you only have a certain amount of space on your interface to fit all of your different controls that you want to have. And so if you want to fit a lot of controls, sometimes that means needing to size everything down really small, and depending on the device you're using, maybe that's almost unusable. But um, what I'm going to show you how to do today is to create a scrolling interface whereby you get a scroll bar, and you can scroll up and down, like this. So you can create this as long as you want. Well, theoretically, there's probably a limit, but in this case, I've created basically a two times height of the normal interface, and I can scroll and stop anywhere along the way. I could obviously create this as three times, four times, five times height, but the way this is done is actually really simple, and so I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to start by just deleting everything that I've got, and so you can see how it all works from scratch. So first of all, just to explain how it works, you have container, and you have a fader. And what you're doing is you're using the fader's x value to move this container up and down. And when you move the container up and down, then all the elements that are within the container obviously travel with it. So rather than making it fill the screen for now, let's just keep everything relatively small and see how it works. Click on the container object, and then click on the script button at the bottom. We're going to call the script scroll me, and press OK. All right, now, like we've talked about in previous videos, one of the most important parts of any script is the execution mode. When do we want this script? to actually run. Well, we want it to run whenever the fader's value changes. So we want to choose on expression, and then in the box type fader.x. Now, as you might expect, we're going to use a function that we've talked about in previous videos called set attribute. And in this case, we're going to set the container's rect attribute. So we'll start by saying set attribute, and then which object do we want to actually move? Well, we want to move the container object. And since this script is inside a container object, we can just say get object. And now which parameter do we want to change? We want to change the rect parameter, so we'll say rect. And finally, we need to define our rect value. Now again, uh, if you watch the previous videos, you will have seen that the rect attribute comes in the form of a vector with four elements. So just generally speaking, we need to have the x value, that's the location of the top left corner of the object, the y value, again, the top left location, and then the width of the object, and the height of the object, and then close brace. Now, obviously this is not done. Let's put our close parentheses, semicolon, it's still red. These are just placeholders. I've just put these here so you can see what belongs here. Now, one thing that you will have trouble with and you may not even realize that this is an error. See how I've put a space in between each of these? Lemur may reject your vector if there are spaces in between the elements. So just be sure and remove those spaces. All right, now let's talk about how we're going to figure out what values need to go in here. If you think about something sc scrolling up and down, moving up and down, there really isn't that much changing. The width stays the same, the height stays the same, and the x-coordinate stays the same. That is the distance between the left side of the container and the edge of the screen. So all that's really changing is our y-value. So to start out with, let's just rely on uh, the properties over here. We can see the current x, y, width, and height of this object. So let's plug those into the script for starters. All right, so we'll say 504, no space, 224, 200, 200. All right, it's no longer red now, so we know the script is actually valid. Let's click outside. Now, currently, if I hold the E key on the keyboard and scroll the fader up and down, it's not going to do anything. And that's because we haven't told the container script to even pay attention to the fader value. We've just said, do something when the fader value changes, but we haven't actually included the fader's current value in our script. So that's what we need to do next. So before we can do this, we need to decide where we want our starting and ending points to be. We'll assume that where we've got it right now, maybe that's our ending point. And maybe we want it to start above where we are right now. So let's move it up. Now I've probably moved it to the left slightly by accident, but we will ignore that value. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at our y value. It says 24. All right, so it sounds like we wanted to go from y equals 24 to y equals 224. If 24 is our starting point, then it means we need 24 in here somehow. Now, the difference between 24 and 224 is conveniently exactly 200. So basically, we want to use this 0 to 1 value of the fader and multiply that by 200, then add that onto the 24. So let's say 24 plus, and then it's a 200 difference between where, we, where we're starting out and where we want to finish. And we want to multiply that by the current value of the fader, that is, fader.x. Let's get rid of the other 224, and close parentheses. Technically, we don't need those parentheses there, but for clarity, it's nice to have them. All right, so let's see what happens when I drag my scroll bar. Well, good, so we're getting some movement, but it's in the wrong direction. And that's obviously because the fader's value is 0 at the bottom and 1 at the top, which means that at the bottom, you're only getting a result of 24, whereas at the top, you're getting a result of 24 plus 200 times 1, which is just 224. So clearly we need to reverse that. Okay, to see how this works, let's bring in a couple of monitor objects. So this first one we're going to use just to show the value of fader.x. All right, so as we scroll from 0 to 1, this monitor shows the value 0 to 1. But since we want our box to be moving in the opposite direction, we want this value to say 1 at the bottom and then 0 at the top. So let's bring in another monitor object where we can show how to do that. If we say 1 minus fader.x, then this will give us the exact effect that we're looking for. All we need to do now is replace fader.x with 1 minus fader.x. Now this part we do need to be in parentheses, so make sure you add those as well. All right, now when we scroll up and down, we get the effect that we're looking for. When fader is 0, the box is at the original position at the bottom, and when it's at the top, then the box is up at the top. Now, if you're to imagine that this little area surrounding our original location of the box and the fader is our entire interface, then right now our interface is going from visible to not visible. And maybe that's what you want. Maybe you want some sort of a slide over that covers the rest of your interface and that you can move out of the way whenever you want to. And that's one way you could use this technique. But if you did want for some part of the container to appear on the interface at all times, we obviously want for our container to be twice the height that it currently is, or three times the height. It depends how much content you want to put into it. So our first step is to decide how tall we want our container to be. Let's say we want to do three times the height, since that's a little bit different from my original example. We see that our current height is set to 200. Let's change that to 600 and see what we get. All right, so that's looking better, but the problem we have now is that only the top and center sections of our interface would show. There's no way to get this bottom section to show. And the reason is that by increasing the height of the container, we've changed the difference between the position of the container when it's at the topmost position versus when it's at the bottommost position. Just like we did earlier, let's move the container up and then check its properties panel. All right, that looks about right. Currently, the properties say negative 176. So that needs to be our new starting point. Earlier, it was 24. Now we'll make it negative 176 and see what happens. Now we're getting the opposite effect. We only see the bottom section and the middle section. So something else clearly needs to be corrected. Remember how we set our multiplier that is the fader.x value, to multiply against the difference between the original position and the final position? Well, that difference used to be 200, but now we've just moved the original position up. This means we need to take a look at our beginning and ending positions and then place the difference between those two in this spot right here. So we've already said negative 176 is our beginning position. Let's move it down to where we'd like for it to end. All right, y says 224. So we can actually just use a monitor to quickly calculate this for us. 224 minus, I believe it was negative 176.
and we get 400. So let's plug 400 into this spot where we used to have 200. Now when we scroll, the topmost position is correct, and the bottommost position is correct. Remember that it's only vertical adjustments that are that tricky. If you decided sometime you'd rather have an interface that was twice as wide as it currently is, you can just come in here and change the width to, say, 400, for example, and everything will just work. Now I realize we haven't actually put any controls into our interface. We could certainly do that if we wanted to, just to show that they're moving up and down along with everything else. Now one thing you could do, if you don't want to make it obvious that this is a container, you could just mark it as transparent. And then you no longer get those borders on the outside to kind of give your technique away. It just looks like the objects are scrolling up and down. A couple of other techniques you could use are to take advantage of the grid setting and the physics. Let's look at the grid first. Say we didn't want to be able to scroll smoothly from top to bottom, but we wanted to create preset locations, like a top, center, and bottom location. If we change the number of grid lines we have to three, notice what happens. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and make this not transparent so it's clearer what's going on. Okay, so look, I can't choose a value now between the bottom and the middle sections. It's either the bottom or the middle. Same with the top. Top, middle, bottom. So once again, you're imagining that this section right here is the border of your entire interface. So anything below this line is hidden. Anything above this line is hidden. This means you would get the effect you were looking for. Now, in this case, the scroll bar may actually be reversed compared to how you would think about it. Maybe you'd think about this top as viewing the topmost part of this container. And the middle is the same, but say you think about the bottom as viewing the bottom of the container. All you need to do is come back in and remove our fader reversal 1 minus fader.x. Now you have the effect you're looking for. The top is the top, middle is the middle, and bottom is the bottom. I'm going to just put that back for now. And I'm going to turn off the grid setting for our next demonstration. So the physics, this is just something fun you can play around with, but just in the same way that you can apply physics settings to a fader, anything that a fader is affecting also gets those settings applied. So if I change it to none, you get the driest, most literal, wherever I click, the interface jumps. If I change it to interpolate, which is the default setting, then I can th change things like attraction to 0 0.5, friction to 0 0.3, or whatever. And then, you know, it's smooth, right? But uh, the effect is not really that strong until you change it to mass spring. <laughs> and this can be kind of fun. You can make it bounce. I mean, right now it's bouncing pretty slowly. But uh, if you change the attraction a little bit higher, uh, change the friction maybe even lower, and the speed to, you know, you can get it to, <laughs> to bounce. Now that's probably pretty extreme, but you get the idea. So in conclusion, to make a scrolling interface, all you need is a container and a fader. You need a one-line script. The script sets the rect attribute object. It uses a fixed x location, a fixed width, and a fixed height. The y location is what you need to calculate, and that can be tricky, but you start out by deciding what your topmost location will be and what your bottommost location will be. The topmost location itself goes into this spot. The difference between the topmost location and the bottommost location goes into this spot. The name of the fader goes into this spot. And then you can choose to either reverse or not reverse the effect that the fader has on the container by either including one minus or deleting that from the script. And that's all. Thanks for watching.